Stewart, uh, most uh, scientists think that consciousness is uh, an accidental product of evolution. You run evolution again, it might not have occurred, probably wouldn't. Um, many spiritualists think, Eastern philosophers, uh, and some, uh, some Western philosophers, idealists, that consciousness is everything, that the material world is uh, a derivative of consciousness. So you have these two radically different uh, uh, approaches. Some others would say that, although we're not sure how it works, that, that there is something important about consciousness in the universe. Some people look to quantum physics, where you need an observer. Other people say, no, that's a misinterpretation. Now, how do you look upon the relationship between cosmos and consciousness? Accidental or something deeper? No, something deeper. I think consciousness is intrinsic to the universe in the following, following way. Uh, so Roger Penrose has this idea that uh, every quantum state collapse, you could call it decoherence, but it's actually uh, following E equals H over T. When a superposition occurs, which is a separation in underlying reality, it quickly meets the environment, the superposition in this table or anywhere in the air, uh, and quickly reduces by equals H over T, but is random. Nonetheless, uh, there's a moment of subjectivity, uh, uh, an undifferentiated quality, you might say. So consciousness is built into the universe, but in a random um, uh, so you're saying that that occurs everywhere. Correct. So there's a, there's a, a little tiny bit of, when you say subjectivity, that's a word that means like proto-consciousness. Correct. Something, something. Right. So it's a radical claim. Yes, uh, but no more radical than, than panpsychism or idealism. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's still radical. <laughs> okay, but how do you get our type of consciousness? Now, the panpsychists have this combination problem for particles. Uh, we apply that uh, for events, for objective reduction events, uh, along the lines of Whitehead, who dealt with this in a very similar way. And our view is that the objective reduction events are orchestrated by occurring in microtubules and neurons in the brain. So you have synaptic inputs and memory, because memory is embedded in microtubules. So these processes, quantum computations, avoid decoherence to go long enough to reach threshold for collapse to have an, uh, a reduction, a conscious moment that is informed with information and does meaningful uh, uh, function and, uh, and has a, a complex, rich, full conscious experience based on uh, the inputs and the memory in which it's occurring. So uh, the, the claim is, is that every quantum event that occurs, which is everywhere at all times at, at, at a very high rates every second, uh, yes. uh, 10 to the who knows what, uh, every second, um, those are something like consciousness. Now, it, it, how does that relate to the the um, the theories of quantum physics that says uh, you need an observer right. to uh, to decohere it's kind of the 100 180 degrees opposite so if you go to schrodinger's cat the cat's in uh, two states at the same time you need the observer to look at it and that causes it to choose one or the other we would say that before the cat would ever get there it would reach superposition it would reach threshold and collapse to one or the other cat's not a good example because you have its own consciousness but anything which which reaches a threshold will self collapse on its own and have a moment of consciousness so uh the observer effect puts consciousness outside science we're saying consciousness is the reduction when it occurs by this mechanism which is the only way it can occur too according to us. and so therefore consciousness is a fundamental part of reality but it's not all of reality correct we all there's also matter charge spin everything else right uh so uh you, you're in a sense in the middle i'm not sure that's a good place to be here but between those who say consciousness is uh, an accidental um uh, uh, occurrence in the universe to those who say consciousness is everything you're saying consciousness is fundamental but other things are fundamental too but you couldn't have the universe you couldn't have quantum mechanics without consciousness well, consciousness accompanies it or is identical to it. Yeah. So I don't know uh, if you, you couldn't have it without it, but uh, I think it comes along, it's part of it, it's intrinsic. But I think being in the middle is the right thing because we're, we're, we're consistent with science. I don't think there's any fact in neuroscience that, that we're not uh, consistent with, but we're also consistent with some extent with Eastern philosophy. And so if you reflect on that, what, is the, uh, what are the broader implications if consciousness is so bedded into the structure of reality? I, th I think uh, that actually it's very important in, in the course of the universe. You know, Roger Penrose has this new idea that Big Bang was preceded by previous eons. 
And that was preceded by previous eons and so forth. So his idea of a serial universe, much, much different than the multiple universe hypothesis, multiple worlds, multiverse, and all that kind of stuff, where uh, the idea is that to explain the fact that this universe is perfect for us, for life, light, stars, and consciousness, uh, this is called the anthropic principle. And most people would say that... Uh, you know, it's a gazillion to one shot that we had the exact parameters for right, consciousness right. to exist. Therefore, there must be an infinite number of universes, and we happen to hit the cosmic lottery to be in the right one right. because we're the only ones asking the questions. Now, that's a, I think that's a trick. I think that's a, that's a, that's a shell game trick. I think the way I look at it is, and Roger agrees to some extent, but he's a bit more conscious that with these, uh, serial eons that every time there's a big bang that the, the, co the, um, the cosmological parameters and constants might change slightly and it's kind of evolution the universe is evolving with each eon to uh, for what purpose to be optimal for consciousness so in that sense so why would that occur why wouldn't well, it occur what else would would, would be important but, but you're putting you're embedding a teleology into re, into all reality why should eons uh, 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 change and gradually move towards consciousness? why should it move towards anything why should things be goal directed? Well, that's a, you know it runs into the problem of if it is a trial and error or not. So I guess there has to be some idea that that this is guiding the universe. The consciousness is steering the universe uh, over over serial eons. So consciousness what, is steering the universe. I mean that's that's a big thought. <laughs> yeah, but it's no uh, but it's, uh, it's it's no bigger than than idealism that consciousness is everything. And I think it's in the middle between uh, between that thought and, and consciousness being an accidental byproduct. Is that science? That la latter part was speculation, but it's based on possibility and it makes a lot more sense to me than the multiverse, which is silly in, in my view.